Hello, everybody. This is Carrie with the Unicorn Company podcast. Um, so, to start off, first of all, because apparently Podbean is being the... I don't know what the hell they're doing, but they're not talking to Facebook. Facebook's how I sign in. So, I'm probably, for the foreseeable future, switching over to uh, YouTube for the podcasts. And I also have to figure out a way to get things set up with archiving old episodes on Podbean, getting them onto this format as well. So hopefully you'll see those in the future as well so you can catch up with everything else. Um, first of all, I want to go over the news. Since the last time I did an episode, it's been a little while, there have been three recognition guides released, uh, 19, 20, and 21. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Mech of the... Mech of the... Ah, shoot. That's a different, pot, different thing I used to do. Uh, Mech Tech, for those... Th- uh, for the past two episodes have both been from the the uh, recognition guides that were released right before. This last one is once again going to follow in that format. We'll be covering something from recognition guide 21. Um, other than that, I don't know if too much off the top of my head as far as news. I did go to an awesome tournament, and it's mainly what I want to talk about today. Um, I went to the Southern Assault Tournament in uh, oh shoot Winston Salem, North Carolina. Uh, both me and my friend Roz went. Uh, we had a very good time. And, um, you know, I just wanted to go ahead and cover what we did, what, you know, the games we played and all that. Because, yeah, it, it's always good to talk about when you get to play some Alpha Strike and, and throw some dice and meet new people. So, let's go ahead and talk about the tournament itself. So the tournament was six, ra- yeah, six rounds. It started on Saturday at 8.30 a.m. That went, and we had four rounds that day. We had a lunch break at 1 to 2, or roughly around. I know we were late because stuff ran a little late. And then on Sunday, we had two rounds from 9.30 to uh, 2.30. And we had a small break in there, a 30-minute break for lunch. And we had an award ceremony after that. Um... We did get little swag bags, which I say little, but like I'm wearing the shirt right now. So uh, they did ask for our shirt sizes before the tournament, which was awesome. And I now have a Fortress Games and Miniatures and Games shirt with the Southern Assault 2021 on the back. Uh, They also gave us some... Oh God, I'm trying to remember. Hold up. Let me go grab it. All right. So first of all, at the end of the tournament as swag... It wasn't in the bag, but we everybody got them. Uh, everybody got three Southern Assault 2021 um, objective tokens. We all got a Southern Assault 2021 widget, which at first I looked at, and it looks a lot like stuff I've seen for War Machine and 40K, and it's like six inches on one side, four inches on the other, two inches on one side, and then one inch with like a little cutout which I remember using in, like, War Machine for determining melee and stuff like that, um, or one-inch clearance on models. And, okay, so I'm going to say all of these are awesome. Also, we got the shirts, obviously. We got dice, um, and we got a coaster and a koozie. And also, there was um, a Percival miniature for every person, which was totally awesome. So then we went and, um, shoot, I was going to say something. Okay, so we got all the stuff, and give me a second, I have to collect my thoughts. All right, I don't remember exactly where I was going, but yeah, we got, so we got the widget, we got the the tokens, the koozies, the miniature. Um, It was a pretty good amount of of, uh, stuff that you got, and the entrance fee was like $25, I think, if I remember right. Um, If you paid it, I think it was $30. So, I mean, it it was a good amount of stuff you got. Also, I met Mario from the WolfNet podcast. Shout out to Mario, um, who gave me a WolfNet sticker and also a uh, Puma Battle Armor miniature, which will definitely be finding its way into the new list I'm working on, which is uh, something that we'll talk about near the end of this. Um, Because actually, I think I've changed my mind. Today's mech tech is going to be about the star of what that list will be. And yes, I'm going to be open as hell about this list because, yeah, you know. 
Um, also, I met one of my fans, and it's a big shout out to you, Samir. Um, Samir went and he he came to the came to the event. He approached me, and I was totally shocked. And he goes and he he essentially hands me something. He goes, "Here, um, I heard you like cats." Which, of course, I fucking love cats, and we're going to do a cat thing, right? I mean, I did a cat thing all October, and it was so awesome, and I love talking about all the cat mechs. But anyway, he gave me a smoked jaguar patch from the Kickstarter, which is so awesome. So, it's not a Nova Cat one, but it's still a kitty, and I love it, and it will be... I'll figure out what the heck I'm doing with this. It's Velcro, which is so cool, which means I can, like, put Velcro on something and just stick it to it. Anyway, <clears throat> um, so that's all the little shout outs and everything. Uh, I want to go ahead and talk about the tournament. Let's talk about, we're going to do this round by round, okay? So we got our packet. The packet has the information about when we're going to start and all that. It also has a really nice little Death From Above Wargaming quick reference sheet. I didn't find myself needing it because what I did was I printed off page... 201 slash 200 201 of the pdf of the book and i laminated it and this is gonna be like a permanent thing i keep on my clipboard now for when i play and um oh there was also one other shout out i needed to give a shout out to matthew of dejong dejong lewis Advanced Weapon Systems, who I go through for Myth Kitty Minis. Uh, they're one of the licensee. Well, they don't, they're not a licensee. They're, they're one of the people who have permission to print their uh, models from. And he was super awesome, and we talked. And, um, yeah, I think I planted a little seed in his head about a flying Highlander. So we will see where that goes in the future. And um, might show up on the store if he does it. Which, yes. And we talked about the possibility of the Myth Kitty, which is a miniature I want to do for... Well, Miss Kitty Miniatures, you know. Everybody seems to have their own their own store miniature nowadays, so why not? Anyway, can proxy is something like maybe a cauldron born. So let's talk about the tournament and everything. So we went into round one. And of course you need to know what my list is going into round one, right? Everybody needs to know what this list is, because it's awesome. Um, I mean mind you, it didn't win, but it did pretty good, given all things considered. So my list is an Iron Cheetah B, which I printed a miniature for, at skill 3, 68 points. A Nova Cat E, uh, skill 3, 60 points. Cauldronborn H, skill 3, 53 points. There's a theme, you notice it. A Seraph 10A, or 10A. Uh, skill 3, 50 points. Mad Cat W, skill 3, 66 points. Almost tied with the Iron Cheetah for uh, how expensive they are. An Epona E at 29 points. And two squads of Barak Fast Battle Armor at skill 7. Yeah, I know, they're probably not going to hit anything, right? Well, we'll see. Skill 12. Or, sorry, skill 7, point value 12. So it comes out to 350 points total, and unlike the WolfNet format, the 350 points that you use in this format is all played at once. So, awesome, right? Anyway, first round was kill or be killed. And I don't remember all my opponent's names. Excuse me, I apologize. Anyway, going into round one, it was actually a really interesting list, because I'm running a, a Clan Nova Cat list, uh, G Galaxy. And he is running Clan Ghost Bear. So his list, he has a Kodiak Standard, skill 2, 75 points. Gladiator Prime at skill 3, 61. A Grizzly Standard, skill 3 at 54. Uh, Galahad 2, skill 2 at 63. A Thor F, skill 3 at 55. And a Vixen Standard, skill 4 at 38. Uh, his total point value came out to 346 points. So that makes this even more embarrassing. Um, now mind you, some of the people there knew me from the... Uh, they, they weren't there, but they, they knew who I was because of the Tennessee tournament. Um, and, you know, I'm the girl that broke Tennessee is, is how it goes. 
So, yeah, I, I was there, and um, some of the people knew me. So there were some high expectations, which did not get met this year, which is quite unfortunate. But, yeah, I know, I've given you spoilers. Um, you know, so my first match, to be honest, I had trouble landing any shots. Um, and I don't know why. Uh, the engagement, you're on a 4 by 4 mat, it's all medium. And the first match was Kill or Be Killed. So this is a standard stand-up fight. It's using MOV. If any of you are familiar with that from X-Wing, it's comparing how many points were left alive versus, you know, what's the difference in death on each side, essentially. And, um, yeah, he mopped the floor with me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I, if I recall correctly, I, he scored 20 points and I, skilled, I scored 5 points at the end of the game because I use a... Uh, scale on the margin of victory for that so i scored five he scored 20 um quite frankly it was it was pretty much it was kind of embarrassing it was i was not in my groove and i just got totally curb stomped well not totally i could have gotten worse but i didn't so there were battle point modifiers to the game and these modified that last number so you had plus two if you had a physical attack, which I did not, and neither did he. Plus two if my smallest unit destroyed a unit, smallest point unit destroyed a unit, nope. Plus one if you destroyed their highest point unit, I failed on that. Plus one if you get a rear shot, neither of us got that. Plus three if your highest point unit killed three or more units, nobody got that. And plus two if you destroyed more than half your opponent's points, which we both did get. So I went into that round with, let's see, I can actually look it up. So at the end of that round, I had scored. All right, so at the end of round one, I had scored a total of eight points. So round one's over. It stung badly, but life goes on. So does the game, right? Round two, I was playing against, I can't remember, I don't remember anybody's name. Um, but I saw a lot of this while I was there. I, I played against Clan Wolf. Yay, Clan Wolf. Um, so round two is strategic points. And this was an interesting game. Um, this was... And I'm looking at the list of all the players' names. And I can't... I, I don't remember who I had in what order. But round two, I played against the Clan Wolf list. Which consisted of... A Mad Cat B, skill 3, point value 58. A Thor M, skill 4, point value 41. Vulture E, skill 4, point value 33. Ryokin C, skill 4, uh, point value 39. Dragonfly H, skill 4, 38 points. Wolfen E, ooh, I hate the Wolfen, skill 4, 36 points. Dasher D, skill 4, 30 points. Uh, squad of Elemental Battle Armor Fire with AP Gauss. Skill 3 at 22 points. Another squad of those. Skill 4 at 18. And two squads of Salamander Battle Armor. Skill 4, 17 points each. His list came out to a total of 349 points. Now, the Barak, I don't know how familiar you are with that battle armor. It's a fun little piece of battle armor. And the reason I had to skill it so high is because it's expensive. It's like 18 points out of the gate. So the main reason I wanted it was for objective grabbing. And it has a movement of 14 foot. You can sprint, which means it can go up to 21 inches. So I was on objectives on turn one. Problem is, so is the Wolfen. And quite frankly, that Wolfen was... I, I didn't kill it. It was just a pain in the ass all game. Um, we had a really good game, and it was interesting, though, because we had the three objectives across, and we ended up tying on that game. Um, I think I edged him out by one objective point, but the thing is, zero to one objective points is a tie. Okay. Um, let's see, anything particularly... Oh, there was an interesting moment in the game where, like, I totally destroyed a whole ton of his stuff 
simply because it just finally got on my nerves and it was like, okay, all this battle armor is dying now. Um, so yeah, I, I did have a moment where it was like that. And let's see. So we, we each got 12 battle points and then there were the modifiers. So it's plus two if your highest scoring, highest scoring unit did not hold a strategic point. Plus one if your smallest point unit held a strategic point. Plus one if you destroyed an undamaged unit on a strategic point. Plus one if during your battle you say to your opponent, in the midst of chaos there is also opportunity. Sun Tzu. So everybody scored that. I hope everybody scored that at least. We both scored it. We said it like after dice roll, we both said it to each other. Um, objective point modifiers, which just go towards battle points. Plus three if your opponent earned less than four strategic points. Neither of us got that. Plus two if you held two strategic points at the end of any one round. I think he got that. So this was pretty much a back and forth. And it was really a struggle because neither of us could get the upper hand. And neither of us could claim a point long enough. Like, like neither of us could, could keep the other off points to claim them. So it just... Yeah, it, it totally messed with our ability to control the table for either of us. And I think I did start off with one unit on all three objectives, a Barak on two of them, and the opponent on a third. And he was still able to push hard enough with everything to keep me from scoring on those points. Um, if he hadn't, then obviously I would have been able to come out with a lead at the beginning of two which would have then kind of set me up for a minor win but it didn't so after that round on that round i scored a total of 16 points um i believe that was from the 12 points plus my highest point unit did not score a strategic point or hold a strategic point uh that's that uh, i think my smallest unit, or I destroyed an undamaged thing, and also the Sun Tzu thing. Um, so yeah, so we, we, neither of us could get the upper hand, and it just really, really sucked. But the game itself was awesome. So there was that. And then we have round three. Okay, so this is after lunch. Um, I can't remember what we went for lunch. I think we went to Popeye's. Or no. Yeah, I, yeah, we had Popeye's once. Me and Roz drove over Popeye's and had Popeye's. And that was an adventure all in and of itself in a strange town and eating fried chicken. But yeah. Uh, round three. I, yep, I played against a, I don't know what kind of list it was. It was an interesting list. We'll just say that. And there were some interesting moments from this list or from this game. But round three was essentially a variant on, um, shoot, essentially a variant on the standard kill everybody type game. And this one was a little different because it added, you essentially were trying to capture the enemy commander. So each of you had to designate a unit to be your, your enemy commander. Um, my two Baraks, I have one painted up as Applejack, one painted up as Rainbow Dash. Rainbow Dash is my commander. And she's dang good at it. Well, not at first. She got better. Um, so, Rainbow Jack, Rainbow Jack, Rainbow Dash, with her nice high TMM of four, I believe. TMM of three plus one for battle, battle armor makes her a four. She's the one that's doing her thing, and she's the commander. And she hides the whole freaking game. She does not go do anything. She runs back and forth behind cover. I know, not very, like, noble of me or, or clan-like or any of that. But you know what? Sometimes discretion is the better part of Valor. And I think that was part of the better part of Valor right there. So, in the game, well, before I get into the game, let me go over my opponent's list. He had a Daishi D, skill 3, PV 74. Not bad. Uh, Masakari F, skill 4, PV 55, Madcat T, skill 4, PV 63, 
Ryokin A, skill 4, PV 45. Blackhawk F, skill 4, PV 36. Shedu Assault Battle Armor Capture Team, skill 5, PV 13. Rogue Bear Heavy Battle Armor Hybrid, skill 4, PV 11. Karnov uh, UR Transport Battle Armor, skill 7, PV 13. Two flatbed trucks, both at skill 5 with a PV of 1. And if I'm reading this right, he was playing... Oh, oh, and also he had a skill 5 Percival, which is the house mech for... Um, Fortress Games and Miniatures. And that has a PV at skill 5 of 38 points. All right. So, this match, oh, this match was interesting. So, it starts off like your normal everyday shoot him up, except I'm hiding my, um, hiding my commander. He had a, he had his, uh, rogue bear in the, in the helicopter. And he was intent on getting Rainbow Dash. So, this chopper's flying over the battlefield, and it, takes a few i take a few pot shots at it it you know it doesn't go down it's whatever um it was interesting it was really interesting as we as we got towards the the uh meetup because the so everything's going on i kill the percival he you know we're, we're killing stuff back and forth it's no big deal um oh it is but it's not like you know it, it's pretty standard no, nothing stands out. I think the opponent got a few shots on people and put some heat on some people, which was fun. Then the, the helicopter makes it over to the building where Rainbow Dash is hiding behind and disgorges its battle armor. Well, the battle armor is on the other side of the building. And they were clinging to the wall, actually. It was kind of interesting. The battle armor then... Well, there's a Mad Cat right there. My Mad Cat W. It's like six inches from where this battle armor just disgorged. And the Mad Cat, seeing that the commander is in danger, unloads into this battle armor. Just totally greases it. So, here's the commander's thing. Just sitting there like, hey, look, I'm, you know, the dead commander. It's his body or his limp form, whatever. He's, he's there to be picked up. So I continue fighting. He continues fighting. The last turn, Rainbow Dash runs around the building and picks up the dead commander. And here's the reason why. Like, I approached it as a killing type game, but also there was the, hey, if I can grab that at the last moment, it'll be helpful. Because here's what happened. So Rainbow Dash picking that up gave me some objective points. Bonus points. Because... We had a margin of victory, once again, close enough to tie. Within 50 points of each other, we are tied. That's it. There's no getting around it. Well, shoot. Okay. All right, so let's look at what the, uh, you know, let's look at the other things. What, what all did we get? How good did we actually do, like, with other objectives? All right, so starting off. Plus two if you destroy the enemy's, the opponent's highest point unit, which for him was his dire wolf, which I did get, which was like, yes, that thing needed to die. Uh, plus two if your highest point unit is across the center line at the end of the game and not destroyed. Yeah, no. Plus one if you get more than half the enemy force destroyed or critical. I do believe I got that. Actually, let me look at points. Oh, and then plus three if you possess the enemy, the, the enemy commander, the souvenir, plus two if your leader's still alive. So I got five points there. So now I'm at 17. I destroyed his day sheet. That puts me at 19. And where is my thing? Oh, and then I also got um, half his number destroyed or critical. So I got 20 points that game. That's actually a pretty good score when you think about it. So I have 20 points in that game. And everything's awesome. It was pretty cool. I was feeling kind of happy because, you know, it could have gone way worse and it didn't. 
And then round four. All right, so round four is Battletech Rugby. No other way to put it. It was essentially rugby with mechs. And I know you're asking yourself, well, how can you have mech rugby? See, here's the thing. Mech rugby is interesting because mech rugby is like no bueno. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Uh, because what you had to do, you had to run up to the middle of the table and pick up an objective. Easy peasy, right? No. Because you had to stand next to the objective for a turn motionless. Yeah, so yeah, you can have a dash or you can have you can have a wolf and you know whatever you want and run run over there and try to grab the objective. But you gotta stand there for a turn and take whatever you get. Now my opponent in this game scared the living crap crap out of me because of this because my opponent will p i remember his name had a gladiator j a mad cat d a karu prime a nodaki 3s and anher 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 i don't know how to pronounce it uh oh i forgot to say the skills gladiator is a 4 of 55 mad cats a 4 of 51 um, Keru is a 4 at 40. The Nodaki is a 4 at 45. The Anner is a 7 at 13. Um, then he also had two squads of Rogue Bear Battle Armor at skill 4, 13 points each. And two squads of Surat Great F Salama Battle Armor. Uh, one skill 3, one skill 4, 10 and 8 points respectively. A squad of Wraith Battle Armor, standard, skill 4, 11 points. But he also had the thing that scared me, which is, in this scenario, a Viking 2C standard, skill 3 at 91 points. Like, 91 points. And this thing, it's crit resistant, has IF6, case 2. Uh, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It has 17 armor bubbles. Now, mind you, it moves... Four inches and has a TMO of zero. So it needs all the armor bubbles plus the structure. Um, this is where Rainbow Dash suddenly started to prove herself. Because in that game, we both basically ended up in a giant dog pile on the middle of the table. For some reason, and I don't know why, he, he was slowly advancing the Viking towards the objective. And that thing could just erase mechs. It was horrible because it, it does like... Uh, 866. So it's just, it's just like cleaving into mechs with the amount of damage it puts out. And I don't know what I did, but he advanced about halfway up towards the objective and then he backed off. I don't know if it's just the amount of overwhelming number of units I threw on the objective, but he backed off. Um... Which surprised me. Really surprised me. So he backs off. And... Rainbow Dash runs around the back of the thing and starts shooting it in the back. Over and over and over and over. And finally, eventually, it starts to move forward again. Rainbow Dash finally gets... And everything else is shooting at it, too. But Rainbow Dash finally gets the kill shot on it. So Rainbow Dash became a big game hunter in that game as for the objective nobody picked it up and moved it so it just stayed where it was um we essentially wiped each other out for the most part the last units on the table were rainbow dash um oh god he had a squad yeah i think he had the wraith battle armor left alive and the karnov or the anner and i had rainbow dash and Applejack was dead. I'm trying to remember, something else was alive. It might have no. It, it was Rainbow Jack and App, Rainbow Dash and Applejack. Because they couldn't pick up the objective. You had to be a mech or a vehicle, and so neither of them could pick it up. So 
we didn't move anything, so we both scored 12 points. Hey, look, uh, you know, there's a theme going on here. Um, battle point modifiers, let's see, I ended up scoring a total of 16 points on that game. Um, I scored plus one if my fastest unit survived the match. Plus one if I had units reach the enemy side of the board, which I definitely did. And plus two if I prevented the enemy from recovering the pod. All that happened. But yeah. Um... I will say, and <clears throat> this isn't a bad thing, I think it's just from lack of understanding, Will did perform a tactic repeatedly where he would fly his helicopter over, drop the battle armor, they'd leap out, assault a thing, and then at the beginning of the next turn, they'd leap in. Um, I, I didn't think of anything of it at the time. It was a decent game. We had fun. But in talking to Roz at the hotel that night it was like you know this i fought against this, this guy and this is what he did and it was pretty brutal and you know and Roz is like well you do realize you can't get back in the helicopter right i'm like hold up what she goes yeah you, you can't you can't leap back into the helicopter uh i mean hell what was it flying i'm like it was like at elevation 10 and she goes, yeah you, you they can't do that they have to land to pick them up so had the battle armor not been so mobile, it would probably have been a little bit different because they did a lot of damage in that game. Uh, they made a huge difference. Also, they made a huge difference for initiative sense because he could unload, load back up, unload, and it took two movements to load the, help, the helo back up before it moved. But, you know, I'm not worried about it. It just went the way it went. Um, round five... Round five is I played against, oh God, Dustin. Uh, he's from the uh, Mech Bay podcast. I think it's Dustin. Yeah, because I played against a Darren and a Dustin that day. Darren was my first round. Dustin was my fifth round. Um, <clears throat> Dustin had an interesting list. He had a Daishi B. A Man of War Prime, a Ryokin F. They were at skill 444. Four, four. Actually, everything is listed skill 4. So, the day she be, 51 points. Man of War, or yeah, Man of War Prime, 50, or 38 points. Ryokin F, 37 points. Blackhawk L at 30. Fenris J at 65. Dragonfly J at 33. Puma S at 38. The Uller V at. 28, two squads of elemental battle armor, fire, uh, 15 each, 350 even. And this was, it's called hold the line. Um, the way it worked was the center line of the table. You're, you're trying to pass the center line of the table and keep the enemy from doing the same. We essentially ended up trading table sides. <clears throat> um, the opponent went up, put some heat on his day sheet pretty quick. His Ryokin was fast little booger and actually harassed my rear and so did the Fenris I think um, for some reason he got the Ryokin into the rear but then he didn't use it to harass me that much like it, it sort of just disengaged so I wasn't quite sure why he did that but we both ended up crossing the, the field and we scored within one point of each other for kill point or for not kill points for points that made it across the table he had 182 i had 183 literally one point apart um so once again it's a tie 12 points a player woo and then let's see we got bonus objectives bonuses if your highest point unit across the center line of the game yep and is alive plus two if you're able to get two rear shots yep because rainbow dash i forgot to mention killed a daisy that game she went big game hunting again, man. I'm telling you, she was kicking butt. Plus one if your lowest point unit gets an enemy destroyed. That was Rainbow Dash. Uh, plus three if all my units cross center line. We were under the impression that this was during the, uh, like, they had to live. Apparently it was only any at any point. So we both missed out on that plus three points. 
and plus two if less than half the enemy units in numbers cross the center line, which neither of us scored dead either. So we each ended up erroneously scoring ourselves three points lower than we should have, uh, which would be, do, 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 that was round five, 17 points apiece. So finally round six. Round six was interesting. Round six was objectives, but this was the objectives that my list was like waiting for. Um, so there's five tokens on the table, five objective tokens, uh, one in each corner, essentially equal distance out from the sides and one in the middle. Um, and the objective is to hold the objectives as many as you can and get you score points. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we ended up playing that, and it was pretty interesting. I was it, the center objective became a quick point of contention. We both had an objective on each of our sides. We weren't going to test contest them anytime soon. Um, so that center point objective became the the point of contention, as it were. And I ended up putting the Cauldronborn and um, oh shoot, what was the other mech that went up there? Oh, the Timberwolf. Both went up there, and they, they pretty much held it as long as they needed to. Uh, the Calderborn held that objective all game long. It, it did its job awesomely, and it just it was shifting back and forth to keep my target move modifier so I wouldn't get, you know, they wouldn't get pot shots on me that were really easy. And I was down to some structure and just, like, like barely hanging on. But, dear God, that, that you know, that mech just would not die, and it did an amazing job. Um, I think it probably scored like three kills that game. The, I was kind of sad because my, um, my Iron Cheetah, you know, like mid game through, he is no longer really holding objectives. Um, so I'd say looking at, cause I have the tally in front of me. So that's round one, it's round two, round three, round, round four. He's only holding one objective. And then after that, he didn't hold any more objectives. So I got a little bit, I got a little overconfident with the Iron Cheetah. I was like, you know, I'm just going to slog my way across the table and I'm going to go hold that objective that he no longer has. Um, I should have just ran the Timberwolf over there and be like, yep, mine. But I didn't. Cause Timberwolf had the speed without sprinting because it's, uh, it moves 12 instead of 10 because it's the W and I think it has mask. So he had two helos. I should go over his list real quick. He had an Enforcer 37D. Skill 3, PV 32, Vindicator 4L, Skill 3, 44, Shadowhawk 2C8, Skill 2, 48, Vulture E, Skill 3, 40, Asir Medium Anti-Aircraft -air Vehicle, Heavy or Hyper Assault Gauss version, Skill 2, 40, uh, Hephaestus Scout Tank D, Skill 4, 30, Elemental 2 Battle Armor, Skill 3, 17, Hawk Moth Gunship Times 2, Skill 3 each, 29 points each, and a Hunchback 5 SG, Skill 3, 41 points, 350 even. So, <clears throat> the Battle Armor really wasn't an issue. It, it didn't really come into play most of the game. The Hawk Moths did, but they weren't that hard to... to one of them I downed pretty quickly. The other one, eh. It, it, it kept flying around. It's the one that ended up shooting the... Uh, Iron Cheetah in the back, getting one critical and then rolling for a critical, one, one structure, rolling for a critical and blowing off its head. <sighs> yeah, not happy. <laughs> but, I mean, I would have gotten more points and I actually would have, I would have scored the same still in the final. But anyway, yeah, because, um, so... Yeah, that that uh, that was a really hard blow because that that thing, yeah, it just sucked. But he did also disable the tank, the the opponent, in a spot near one of my objectives. And in doing so, he made it where there was this little turret now, like, like a little bunker with with because uh, he he basically immobilized me through um, what's it called the hits that the I don't remember. Motive hits. He basically immobilized me through motive hits, but then he created a small pillbox right near my, my one of my objectives that 
could shoot fire. <laughs> like literally, it could just make things heat up by two if it if it did well. So yeah, he suddenly found himself in a position where it's like, crap, I can't, you know, that's not going to help me. Um, and I eventually just kind of pushed through and the only units he had survived were the Vulture and the, uh, what's it called? One of the Hawk Moths. And actually, I take it back. The Hawk Moth scored his last objective point on the last turn of the game, which... So it was like three turns he held objectives and then there was nothing and then that Hawk Moth. Now me, on the other hand, I ended up scoring... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13... Uh, like 26 points. <laughs> so I racked up the points. I got a, yeah, I got a 20, 25 to zero win. Oh my God. I finally got a, a win. And then I got plus two for controlling an objective on the offside of the table and plus one if my enemy's highest BV unit was destroyed. Awesome. So that put me at a total of 28 points. So my grand total after all that with one loss, four ties, and a win, big win now, <clears throat> was, let's go all the way over. All right, so it's the quiz, sportsman, best painted, best general. That put me at 105 points for best general. So, for best general, all right, so for best general, I scored 105 points. Now, the way the prize formatting was set up is that you could not win more than one prize. So, first prize and best general went to Mario. So, now I'm bumped up to sixth. And then the next two up, essentially, ended up winning best overall and best... Um, What's it called? Best overall and I want to say best hobbyist. So suddenly I am bumped up to fourth right behind Roz. And then let's see. In best overall, I scored sixth. Um, overall scores. Joshua Varga was number one. Mario was number two. Justin Hall was number three. Will Weston's fourth. Darren Mullen from the Mech Bay, or no, that's not Darren. Is it Darren? No. I can't remember. Um, I know he won something, but I ended up fin finishing right behind uh, John Alspech and right ahead of Samir, my super fan who gave me that patch. So overall, I think I did pretty good. Um, looking at my other scores, looking at my other scores, I scored pretty decently. Um, I didn't do quite as well as I wish I had in the painting category. Hobbyist, I did pretty well, which I can't remember what hobbyist was. Sportsmanship, I'm not going to worry about because everybody scored pretty high in sportsmanship and army comp. Um, somebody did hit me pretty hard with it, decently hard in army comp, but I, otherwise I did really good. So, Yeah. It was, uh, it was interesting. Um, it was a good tournament. I will say, finishing overall sixth out of a total of somewhere around 30, actually, of the stats here. Let me see. Oh, and I should say that me and John were tied, technically, for uh, best overall. We were both 251 points. So we each got six slash seven. We were tied for sixth. So there were 32 players out of 32 players finishing sixth place is not bad. Um, that means I was in the top 20%. And yeah, I totally, I'll totally take that. Uh, especially considering that I have not touched Alpha Strike in almost a year. A year, mind you. Anyway, that gets us over to our, um, our mech. Uh, mech tech. So today's mech tech is going to be about what will be the star of the list next year if we do this. Um, 
and that would be the Vulture 3. This is one of my favorite mechs. Um, the reason for that is because of Mech Warrior 4. If you haven't seen the intro to Mech Warrior 4, you need to watch it. It is awesome. I plan on killing the painting score next year and the hobbyist stuff because I am taking Sigma Lance. That's right. It's going to be the Vulture Mark III, uh, Shadow Cat, a Cougar, and if you look in the background during the explosion scene, there's a Raven. So that should be Sigma Lance. It'll be supported by some infantry and vehicles. It should be awesome to play. And um, let's go ahead and talk about the Vulture Mark III. So I know technically Mech Warrior 4 is not a Mark III. It's a Mark II. We'll get into that. The Vulture Mark III is a mech that was built by Clan Ghost Bear because they needed to have vultures because they like vultures. And they decided to do the Vulture Mark III after the Mark II. The Mark II is basically a reskinned standard Vulture, or Vulture Omni Mech. Um, the Mark II was reskinned because they were building with inner sphere, in an inner sphere factory at that point. It looks like the Mark III. And then you have the Mark III, which is what we get in Mech Warrior IV, or in Battletech. Mech, Mech Warrior IV had the Vulture Mark II. So the Mark III is an awesome awesome mech all right so i want to talk about this mech a little bit as far as what it's capable of doing all right so the vulture mark three is a magnificent machine first of all just want to say that um it is a 60 ton clan omni mech and for fixed equipment it has ferrofibrous armor it has endo steel structure um it's a Endo steel structure on the mech 300 XL engine gives it a speed of up to 86 kilometers an hour. Uh, 12 double heat sinks built into the chassis with a armor, uh, with an armor, with armor protection of nine and a half tons, which is pretty evenly spread out. It has a little bit more armor than the original Vulture, which is, um, you know, it's not a bad thing at all because the Vulture is known for having thinner armor than you ever really want and it's configurations and we're just going to cover this the readout tech readout configurations not the uh blessed order one or any of that um its configurations are pretty straightforward and it it kind of expands on the what we saw with the original vulture so the vulture mark three you have for its primary weapons configuration um, it's a bilateral configuration. It's the same on either side. It has two ER medium lasers in each arm. It has two LRM 20s in each, each side torso. It carries a total of four tons of LRM ammunition, which means it's going to run out of ammo pretty quick. Um, and then it has two ER medium lasers in the center torso and like a little tummy gun mount. Um, Overall, this thing is a fire support mech through and through. It's a walking LRM carrier. It just has no longevity on the battlefield as far as the, the capability for shooting the LRMs over and over. Um, I kind of think the space would have been better spent on maybe, like, I don't know, something else? I'm not sure what. Um, but yeah, it has a battle value a pretty decently high battle value of 27 29 um i shouldn't say decent but it has, it has a decent battle value it's 27 29 battle value it's a pretty good mech overall i, I like it it's just eh, I, I i i feel like there could have been something done differently with that yeah um i don't think it needed four alarm 20s it, it's overkill but it's fun. Then we have the alternate configuration A, which I feel is probably the one that was seen in the uh, Mech Warrior opening because of, well, if you watch Mech Warrior 4, you'll see it has auto cannons on each arm, it has missiles on each torso, and it has uh, medium pulse lasers in the center torso. And in this case, that's what we got. We have, all, once again, bilateral configuration, really well done. Uh, Ultra AC-5 in each arm. It has a total of two tons of ammunition for those. It's not going to run dry anytime soon. Two SRM-6s in each side torso with one ton of ammunition. Once again, a little light on the ammo. Mm. Um, 
double heat sink in each side torso. And in the center torso, it mounts two medium pulse lasers in that little chin turret. So this one is kind of brawlery. I don't know how to put that. Um, the Ultra AC5s are nice at range, and then the SRM6s allow you to do just some really mean things um, up close as far as like crit seeking and stuff like that. It has a battle value of 1880, so it's not super expensive either. Now, the B configuration is closer to what we would expect from the original Vulture, but it has a slight twist because you can't just have the standard Vulture here. So, once again, we've got a bilateral configuration. It's completely uh, symmetrical on each side. Each arm houses an ER large laser. Each torso houses one LRM-20 with two tons of ammunition. Um, that seems right to me. Uh, also a double heat sink in each side torso. The center torso houses a pair of ER large lasers. This to me seems like the most logical primary configuration, but wait, there's more. In addition to this, it has four count them four jump jets, two mounted in each leg, thus giving it a jump capacity of up to four hexes or eight inches in alpha strike. Battle value on this is 2572. Really well, you know, re re really well thought out design. I like the fact that they dropped the LRMs for some ER, sort of ER large lasers. Um, would have been nice if we could have used improved jump jets to actually make this thing fly. <laughs> And maybe not worry about the ER larges. Do something, I don't know, different. Like, stick with the ER mediums for close-up. And, yeah. So, and then we have the C configuration, the Charlie config. Uh, this one is kind of weird. It has... Once again, it's set up... Each side is the same. Each arm ca uh, carries a micro-pulse laser... Each torso has four Streak SRM6s, in case you really want to sandblast your opponent and make them hate you. Uh, those each have two tons of ammunition supplying them, and the center torso gun, the center torso turret, which isn't a turret in the game, but, it, you know, has um, two micro pulse lasers as well. Battle value is $22.99 on this. I don't like the micro pulse lasers. I apologize for that. I don't like the micro pulse lasers. They are just not interesting to have to deal with. Um, they're very short range. They just feel like they're there. I would rather have some ER smalls or just two ER mediums. I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. And then we have the Delta configuration. This is also completely set up to be the same on each side. And it's it's an interesting one. Um, has in each arm has a medium pulse laser. All right. Each torso, each side torso mounts a rotary auto cannon five. And then it carries six tons of ammunition for those two guns. So I'm expecting, I'm thinking they expect it to fire at triple rate constantly or quad rate. Um, it's interesting. I, I feel like they were trying to harken back to the double Gauss rifle days of the original Vulture, but it just doesn't, I don't know. It, it, eh. This feels more like a Fed Sons design, which is funny because that's where we were introduced to this mech for the most part. So let's take a look at this little this little beauty in Alpha Strike. So starting with the Prime, um, things that will not change on this mech for the most part. Type Battle Mech, size 3, target move modifier of 2, movement of 10, and armor of 6, structure of 3. That's pretty much not changing anytime soon on this design. Um, mind you, we have a jumper in here, but that's about it. The roll on the Prime is a missile boat. It comes in at 47 points, has a short, medium, and long of 4, overheat of 4. It's all those missile launchers. 
Uh, specials are Case, Indirect Fire 4, LRM 224, and Omni. Um, overall, it's it's a fire support mech. You, I'm surprised it doesn't have overheat long. Um, I'm sure the calculations, yeah. But fire support mech, it's built to hide behind things and lob missiles over while someone spots for it. Pretty straightforward and not a bad price for it. Then we have the Vulture A. <clears throat> the Vulture Mark III A. And this is obviously going to be the star of my list because I'm... I have painted this thing screen accurate. It is a beautiful model. Um, I'm actually going to end up using Ion Raptor's Vulture Mark III, which I don't know who has seen it. Um, I obviously can't sell it, but we do have a beautiful Vulture model over it. Actually, we don't have it released yet. We will have a beautiful, beautiful Vulture model over at Miss Kitty Mini soon. Um, but the Vulture Mark III A is 47 points. It is a skirmisher. Short and medium values are 6, long is 2, overheat is 0, has specials case, omni, and SRM of 2-2. Two, two. This is a pretty decent skirmisher. It has high damage output without having to worry about overheat to get there. Um, has long range for a little bit of sniping if you are, you know, like if you find yourself really far away from the enemy, you can at least do some pot shots on them. Pretty balanced design. I really like this one. And this is going to be the one that I'm using in my list. So anybody out there listening who's like, oh, let's see. What are they going to be using next year? She is going to be taking that. Um, yeah. So, I mean, if you've seen the intro, you know which four mechs are going to be there. You just don't know what's going to be supporting them, which is also going to be fun. Uh, then we have the B. The Bravo. Vulture Mark III Bravo. It is pulling up for me right now because I didn't pre-write down this all, all this one. Because I was just... Yeah. So... This one's role is, once again, Missile Boat. Point value is 44. Uh, short and medium are 4. Long is 3. Overheat is 2. Uh, specials are Case, Indirect Fire 2, LRM 222, Omni, Overheat Long. Um, got some questions about that with Prime. And Jump Week 1. So, it has a little bit more mobility. The jumping does not change your target movement modifier. Um, it's basically there to get around things if you need to. Or to get behind somebody if you really need to jump behind them. Um, the overheat of two makes it really good at brawling at short and medium. Overheat of long makes this thing a really good sniper. It... Yeah, it, it's it's... It's basically a slightly more, uh, I don't want to say slightly more usable, it's a slightly more, um, that's what I'm looking for here, slightly more diverse version of the design? I don't know, that sounds wrong. Slightly, it, it can do more things. It has a bigger toolbox at its disposal. Then we have the Mark III, Vulture Mark III Charlie, which is actually really good in Alpha Strike. So one of the things that I've noticed between Alpha Strike and, and Classic is that some of the designs in Classic do not translate over to their scary self in Alpha Strike. For example, um, one of my favorite mechs to take in Classic when I'm playing with the whole thing is the the Jager mech, the DG variant, which is the dual Gauss rifle variant. It has paper thin armor, um, but it's a Jagger Mac. It's a Jagger Mac. You don't want to. You don't want to deal with the thing. It's not worth the time. But then it starts flinging fifteen point, you know, Volkswagen Beetles of death at you. And um, yeah, while it is a Jagger Mac, you don't want to deal with it. It's also a Jagger Mac that is flinging Gauss rifle shells or rounds. So you do have to deal with it. And it's an awesome mech. In Alpha Strike, I think it's a three three three. It head capping scary units in Battletech do not translate to Alpha Strike. Meanwhile, trooper designs and stuff with a lot of weapons on it translates really well. In this case, the Vulture Mark III Charlie. Um, it's a skirmisher. It has a point value of 47, which seems to be a common theme with the Vulture Mark III. Uh, short and medium are 7 and 6, respectively, with an overheat of 2. Specials are Case and Omni. This thing is essentially a quick little sledgehammer you just throw at somebody and watch them shriek in terror as it shoots them up. 
Nothing more, nothing less. I mean, not much else to cover on that one. Um, <clears throat> I do like it. It's interesting. It's very fun in tournaments. But because of fluff, I'm going to be going with something else next year. And then finally, we have the Vulture Mark 3D, which is interesting. So it's a skirmisher, has a point value of 49 points. Short and medium are 6, long is 4, overheat 0. That's them rotary auto cannons spooling up and just flinging lead. Uh, things are case, as far as the specials, are casing on me. Nothing special, nothing not special. I don't know how to put that. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's another little sledgehammer. It doesn't have the overheat, so it's not, you can't like spike damage if you need to. Um, especially near death, which is always like where you see it happen. It's like, oh, I have like two structure left. I'm just going to crank up the heat and watch things die. Um, if, if I'm going, you're going with me. But yeah, so that's, you know, it, it's a really good design. It's really interesting. It's the, the Vulture Mark III overall in Alpha Strike, given that the point values are so close. Um... <clears throat> I mean, three of them have a point value of 47, one of 44, and one of 49. I mean, technically, this is one that you could actually use like an Omni-Mech in like a campaign because your point value is not changing on three of the chassis, on three of the variants. The Prime, the A, and the C. And the C, quite frankly, is a nice little slugger. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good mech. It's fun. It's... It does a job, and most of that job is either skirmishing or flinging missiles over a hill at somebody that can't see you. So that's pretty much it for our mech tech today. Um, give me one second here. Yep. All right, so yeah, that's pretty much it for our mech tech. I do want to go ahead and encourage you, check out Myth Kitty Minis on Etsy. Um, that is my self-sponsoring sponsorship i don't know how that works anyway um until next time and hopefully we can get podbean fixed because i know that samir is probably missing out on this episode and i'm really sorry about that uh y'all have a great day great evening great whatever it is where you are this is carrie signing off